Even if you train at a commercial gym, microloading is still worth it. See, there's a common argument that because individual weight plates vary so much, you can never really know what you're actually lifting. The sum is going to be off 100% of the time, unless using calibrated plates. And that does pose a huge problem for not only adding small plates, but also tracking in general, especially when the gym is massive and you got guys mixing and matching the plates or bringing them from one side to the other. This means that on any given workout day, you are not using the same plates as the previous session. Sounds horrific, right? Except for a few things I'd like to point out. The first is the brand of the plates. Not all of them are created equal, even if they are the basic cast iron ones. For example, if you go on the Rogue Fitness website and check out the standard Olympic plates, you'll see that they indicate a plus or minus 3% tolerance, which is a lot better compared to the cheaper brands. This is what really accounts for those crazy fluctuations, the muscular imbalances that you've seen so often that's not body related. You go to do a bench press and you're completely twisted to the side. What is going on? Well, it's not your fault. This just happened to me too. So it's important to do your research before selecting those plates because a lot of gyms have different kinds available. In my case, there were three sets. The standard, Olympia, and rubbers. What I found over time is that the Olympias were true to their weight. And what's really cool is that my friend who used to work at the gym, and I would work out with him too, would always tell me, Alex, use the Olympias. Why? Because on his own free time, he weighed them all out and found them to be as close as possible to 45 pounds, whereas the standard would often be a little bit heavier or slightly lighter. So from that point forward, I always use the Olympias and my form looked that much cleaner. And when I would track the workouts in my logbook, which I still do to this fucking day, old school, bro, the numbers made sense, which is another point I want to throw in there. Even if it is true that it's not really accurate, what remains consistent? RPE, if you're good at using it. And a lot of experienced lifters incorporate that as a major part of their training. This way, you're kind of auto-regulating according to that session. And hey, it might just be that you did under-recover slightly. So you don't have to necessarily remove the microplates to accommodate for that. As long as the intensity is being matched, it's all good. Also, depending how you started off with the session, you're going to be using the same plates for back off work. And a lot of us are using that in our training. In fact, it's one of the main ways I got my 405 bench. You work up to a heavy single, and then off that one rep max, stick to the 60 to 70% range. So you might remove a plate, a plate and a half, it depends on the exercise. So in this case, even if your peak weight and back off weight was wrong, the percentage is still mostly correct because technically the plates that you removed could have been on the heavier side, which can distort things a bit. But at least we know that it's closer to our objective. Like we can't be perfect here. Let's be as reasonable as possible when talking about tracking and microloading. Otherwise, let's just forget about the idea completely of literally tracking anything because then you're just wasting your time. And I think that perspective is a little bit extreme. So that's my first point. The second is actually a pretty good one that not a lot of people are talking about. In my experience of going to many gyms, working out with people in person, talking to you guys online, in most cases, and give me your feedback in the comment section to verify what I'm saying. I wanna get some more examples on this. The 45 pounders, are the most inaccurate plates. Not when you go below, except for maybe the 35 pounders, but very few guys use that. What I have consistently found is that the 10 pounders, nine out of 10 times, weigh exactly 10 pounds when you weigh them out. The two and a half pounders, same thing. And if it's 2.4, who gives up? And the fives, always good. And the 25s tend to be correct as well. The worst I've seen is like, 24.6 or 24.8 or 25.2 but usually they tend to be smack at 25 so i see some guys who will buy calibrated 45 and 55 pound plates but then the rest of their setup is cast iron why because they figured this out the same way 
the heavier you go up there, the more inaccurate they tend to be, which makes sense, doesn't it? So if you know this information, what does this imply? For most of your basic accessory work, let's say your isolations or little small movements, microloading is a terrific idea because it probably is what it says, or at least much closer to it compared to a barbell back squat. Like if you're squatting four or five plates, okay, maybe you're doing a little bit more than four or five or 500. But if you're only curling 70 pounds, what's the chances that you're doing 77 with those exact loads? Very low. And this way, fractional plates are best used for these smaller movements, which is what I usually recommend in the first place. Or for exercises that have less loading potential, like an overhead press. And isn't it amazing how this movement tends to go up slowly regardless? So if you got a 25 and a 10 on your side, then throw on those little one pounders, you can make linear progress again. And it probably is exactly what it says on that bar, or super close to it, like I said. So the less weight you're lifting, the less of a concern this is. And that's beautiful because most microloaders are typically going to be late novices or early intermediates. In this way, it's not worthless for you. It might be a little bit harder for more advanced guys on big heavy compounds, but like I said, you can mitigate some of that by carefully selecting the plates and paying attention to how your body's feeling, which you will have a grasp of over the years. Lastly, for all my guys who love dumbbells, and are having plateaus left and right because the increments are far too large, there is a solution for you. Shout out to Garage Gym Reviews. Dumbbell magnetic plates. Why is it such a terrific option for you? For the simple reason that the dumbbells don't change. They're likely the same ones that have been there for a decade or more. Or if they have been upgraded, at least you know they're gonna remain in that gym. So if I grab the 40 pounders out of the rack and I toss them at the complete end of the gym and there's only one pair available, well, some guy's going to pick them up, put them back in the dumbbell rack and the next person who uses them is going to be lifting that exact same weight. There's zero adjustability is what I'm saying. Therefore, you can know with 100% confidence that even if the dumbbells are indeed inaccurate, let's say you're doing 39 pounds instead of 40, the trackability is 100% precise. In this way, microplates are flawless and highly advantageous, especially since a lot of our dumbbell movements tend to be smaller exercise by design in which it is more difficult to make progress, especially things like extensions and curls. Of course, you can go down the route of increasing repetitions and changing up the variations. I mean, that's all great, but what if you just wanna to stick to the regular sets and reps, just add in a little bit more weight? That's where the fractional plates come into play. And you'll find that by doing this, you can milk the linear progression gains for a significantly longer period of time. So that's what I'd recommend for the dumbbells. And you should notice progression being a lot smoother from this point forward. And with that said, there's not much else to say regarding the topic. Obviously, if you work out at a home gym, you have control of what you buy. And even if the weights aren't accurate, you can always write down exactly what they are, mix and match accordingly. But for most of you who work out at a gym, these are your best solutions. Let's not discount something just because there are little flaws. We can work around them and make the idea really work. And I hope that you give microloading another shot after hearing these arguments.